the Lord shall not hold him guiltless. And I'll be preaching on the third commandment. Exodus chapter 20, verse 7 says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord would not hold him guiltless that takest his name in vain. Now, to take the Lord's name in vain, it means to use the Lord's name in a way that's not worthy. That's, 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 that's not worthy of his name. We treat it as worthless or without value or without meaning. And this is a particular sin that the Lord says he will not hold him guiltless that does this thing. And we need to make sure as Christians that we use God's name in a way that's worthy. Okay, and the Lord will not hold that person guiltless. And the reason why is because it reflects the value of the name of Jesus. If the name of Jesus wasn't, or the name of God wasn't of extreme value, then it wouldn't be a big deal for someone to use it in vain. But it's a reflection of the value of that name. Let me read to you Psalms 8 verse 9. It says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. It's an excellent name. Therefore, it's worthy of being treated with the respect that it's due. And to, to help you understand, understand this, if you think of a name that might be of value to you, like maybe your wife's name or your husband's name or the name of one of your children, if you heard someone speaking wrongly or would not respect about your wife, or your husband, or one of your children, you would, you would not hold that person guiltless because it's a name that's of great value to you. But you if, it wasn't, if you didn't care about your wife or your children, you'd be like, whatever, it doesn't matter. But because it's of such value to you, you're not going to let that go by. You're not going to hold that person guiltless. You're going to bring that to that person's attention. It's the same with God because the name of God is excellent in all the earth. Okay? If you can turn to Jude... Turn to Jude, and now let me read to you from Matthew chapter 12. And God feels the same about his name, just like you would towards someone speaking in vain, if you like, about your wife or your husband or one of your children. Let me read to you from Matthew 12, verse 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be contemned. Condi condemned. So every idle word a man speaks, God's going to hold him to account to that word. Every time someone blasphemes the name of Jesus or uses the name of God in vain, they're going to give account of that at the day of judgment, and they would not be found you know, without sin. They will be guilty at that day. So I just hear people, they use the, the name of the Lord in vain, and they, they use the name of Jesus, as a, as a curse word, and they're going to give an account of every single time they've done that, and that's going to be a day of great wrath for that person. However, by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So they'll be condemned. They called out the name of Jesus in a way that was in vain, and they'll be condemned for that. But however, if you call upon the name of the Lord, not in vain, but with the respect that that name's Jew, that you'll be justified by that. If you call upon the name of the Lord, you just shall be saved. So you can see how the devil has corrupted the name of Jesus. That's the only name by which man can be saved. And he's done a work in the fallen hearts of man to use that name as a swear word. So they're cursing the only name that can save them. And the Lord would not hold that person guiltless. Just like you wouldn't hold someone guiltless if they used your wife's name in vain. So have a look at Jude chapter 1. Verse 14. Jude, verse 14. Have a look there. It says, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to, to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed. Have a look at this. And of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So when I read there about hard speeches, I think of these wicked atheists that bring all these lectures and speeches against the name of the Lord. And they use his name in vain. They say he doesn't exist. And it's rubbish. These guys are just looking for a crutch and all this sort of stuff. And they bring speeches against the Lord. Well, well when he comes back, he's going to be holding them to account. It's going to remind them of these hard speeches. So where are your hard speeches now, you atheists? Where are you now? Wicked. And the Lord says he will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. 
Well, they have their, their short window now to bring these hard speeches, but God is just, just waiting, the wrath is just building up, building up, and we need to take comfort. That's going to happen. That God is not going to hold these wicked people guiltless. And we can take great comfort in that. So how are some ways that we can, or people can take the Lord's name in vain, some other ways that people can do that? Well, often one phrase you hear people say as a swear word is, is God Almighty. And that is one of his names. Let me read to you. If you can turn to Acts chapter 4, and I'll read to you from Exodus chapter 2, uh, chapter 6, sorry, from verse 2. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord, and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty, but by the name of Jehovah was I not known to them. So a name of God is God Almighty. So when these people, they curse God by saying, oh, God Almighty, well, that's sin. That is taking the Lord's name in vain because that is his name. Okay, so you're there in Acts chapter 4. Have a look at verse 11. Talking about the name of Jesus there. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And again, like we said before, people curse that name. They're foolish to be doing that. They're cursing the only name by which they can be saved. And it's the name which is above every other name. It's the name of the highest name there is, and therefore God does not hold that person guiltless if they curse that name. So it makes sense that the devil would try and lower the value of that name and use it as a curse word. So we can see how this is such a, a wicked sin to reduce God's name to a level that is without the value that it's due. And as, as Christians, we need to make sure that we don't even come close to committing this sin. We don't even go close. And often, as Christians, we can you know, put OMG... On, on social media, which is short for, oh my God, and that's taken the Lord's name in vain. So don't even do that. Don't, don't do that at all. Don't even say, oh my gosh, because that's the cinnamon for, oh my God. It's just a replacement word. So don't even go close to such a wicked sin. And let me, what's another way that you can take the Lord's name in vain? Let's have a look at Exodus, no, sorry, Ezekiel chapter 13. If you can turn there, please. And this is a way that so-called Christians can take the Lord's name in vain or treat his name without the respect that it's due. Ezekiel 13, verse 6 and verse 7. And this is also extremely wicked. Let's have a look there. It says, They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord have not sent them, and they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Have ye not seen a vain vision, and have ye not spoken a lying divination? Whereas you say, The Lord saith it, albeit... I have not spoken. So people use God's name in vain by attaching the name of the Lord to things they make up. They make up stuff and prophecies and visions and then they grab the name's Lord and they don't use his name with the respect that it's due and they just tag it on to whatever they want to say to try and give credence to what they're saying. And that's using the Lord's name in vain in a way that's not worthy of his name. And this is another uh, wicked sin that the Lord does not hold guiltless. Have a look there in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 20, if you can turn there. What does the Lord think about when people use his name in such way? Verse 28, uh, Deuteronomy 18, verse 20. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. So we can see there that if you're going to use in the Old Testament law, if you're going to use God's name in a way that is not right and not correct, and you say God said something when he didn't say something, well, that prophet was put to death because the Lord's name is worthy and should not be used in vain. And let me close by reading from Philippians chapter 2, verse 8 and 11. <clears throat> it says there, And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also highly exalted him, and have a look at this, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So we can see that at the name of Jesus 
is above every other name and we need to use it with, with the respect that it's due. All right, let's close there.